Hello and welcome to this first look video of the latest version of Ubuntu Studio, which is Ubuntu Studio 22.04 LTS Jammy Jellyfish. Now just some quick housekeeping to get out of the way before we start the review proper. Normally I do a, both a first look video and then normally about three or four months later I do a review of each version of Ubuntu Studio. However, I did not do a review for the last version, which was 21.10, as really the review videos didn't seem like they really made much sense. It reached a point where not a whole lot was changing and it was basically just a short video of me saying, yes, it works. But one thing that I will say about the last version, just before we go into the first video here, is that about two months before the upgrade to the latest version, it did actually develop a bit of an issue, and it was, this was an issue to do with audio, and actually an issue which initially I had on Windows 10, which actually caused me to switch from Windows to Linux as my primary operating system, and that was popping and crackling in the audio. Now this seems to happen, and I'm wondering if it's actually a problem with my audio interface, which is an M Audio M Track Plus, but it doesn't do it all the time, and it didn't do it when I switched, to begin with anyway that is. And what it is, is when I have certain programs open, I start getting popping and crackling. And, oh, it just, it, it grinds on you. It's really irritating because it's random popping and crackling and it just drives you mad. I was hoping that the upgrade to 22.04 would fix it. And so far, touch wood, it seems to have. Thank goodness for that. But from now on, I will just be doing first look videos of each iteration of Ubuntu Studio unless something really important or really particular happens in between that I think needs addressing. So let's get on with the first look video properly. And so if you're brand new to all of this, let's quickly go through what Ubuntu Studio is. It is a distribution of Linux, which is based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. And basically it is Ubuntu, with the KDE Plasma desktop environment, but it also has a whole load of software installed and configured out of the box for use in the creative arts. So that's things like music and audio editing, video editing and live streaming, graphics and visual art, illustration, writing, photography, photo editing, as well as other creative endeavors. If you're in a creative field and you need software to do something, likelihood is it is pre-installed on here. But you might ask, What's the difference between just having a normal version of Ubuntu and installing the software? You'll also notice that I did say pre-configured, because of course there's more than just installing a piece of software involved with this. If I take, for example, audio, as I'm a musician, we have right at the top here our door, which is a digital audio workstation. But a digital audio workstation is kind of like a blank canvas which you tend to use lots of plugins with. Ubuntu Studio has loads of plugins installed. As well as that, there are actually system level updates, such as using a low latency kernel. Now the kernel is the piece of software that allows the hardware to interact with the software. Linux itself is actually the kernel, and normally you have what is referred to as the generic kernel, which is just the one you'd use for like normal computing. But Ubuntu Studio gives you the low latency kernel, which as the name suggests, allows there for there to be less latency in the system. And uh, when you are recording, you want as little latency as possible. That's basically a delay between, say, a press on a keyboard, and I mean like a musical keyboard here, and it actually being, you know, registered by the computer so you can actually hear the note. Basically, poor latency would be if you press that key and then there's a slight delay before you hear the note. Low latency will allow it to be basically instantaneous. And that helps with both, you know, being able to use it, say, as like a live instrument, say if you had a MIDI keyboard plugged into it, you would use it for its sounds or for recording itself because you might be in time in what you're playing on the keyboard for example but if it takes a second to register on the computer it'll sound out of time and there are tricks like quantizing but really the the easiest solution is just to have it be in time the first time and have to do as little tweaking later as possible so just before we have a look at the distribution itself to actually get to it you go to ubuntu studio's website which is ubuntustudio.org and currently the only version available is the LTS. In case you're not too sure about how software is done on Linux or Ubuntu in general, LTS stands for long-term support release. Basically, these are versions of distributions which get updates and supports for a longer period of time. And as suggested here, you'll have it for about three years. There are also uh, six monthly updates, 
to Ubuntu, and I tend to favour those ones. So that'll be I want one that comes out in April of every year, and one that comes out in October of every year. That those tend to be the ones I go for. But some people like to stick to the long-term support versions, especially if, say, for example, you're using a studio and you don't want to have to be constantly updating the whole system all the time. The LTS versions come out every two years, so there is still a upgrade path, but rather than being every six months, it's every two years. But you'll continue to get things like security updates and I think kernel patches up until at least April of 2025. So it gives you a good few years to go at it. So once you on your website, if you just go to download, you'll obviously then be able to download it. And then you need to put it onto a USB stick and then plug it into the computer and install it from there. I will leave other videos to explain how to do that. But for now, we're going to have a look at the release notes for this version. So here are the release notes for the latest version where we have some information about upgrading to this version if you are coming from a, a previous version. And uh, something they do point out is they don't recommend upgrading from Ubuntu Studios 20.04, which is the previous LTS. And this is because it used a different desktop environment, XFCE. And it's really recommended that you don't upgrade that version to this version, you actually reinstall it instead. Uh, I tried doing an upgrade from, I think it was the XFC version of 20.10 to 21.04, I think that was one where they changed. And they warned me against doing that, and I did it anyway, and a load of things got quite broken. So I can I can verify that you probably do want to just burn it to USB and then reinstall it from there. However, I can verify that, at least in my case, an upgrade from 21.10 to 22.04 has been very smooth, actually. So here are some highlighted changes from the previous release up to this version. We're actually going to go through and have a look at some of the pieces of software in a second, but here are things just to point out. Uh, Studio Controls has been updated to version 2.3.1. Uh, now Studio Controls is a bit of a killer app for Ubuntu Studio. It's something developed by them originally, but I think they might have combined with another project at some point. And basically, it gives you a GUI, a graphical user interface, for really fine-tuning a lot of the inner workings of the audio on the system. Very, very useful if you are going to be using it for audio work. Um, and that is something that I believe is available on other versions of Ubuntu, but that's something where really you come to Ubuntu Studio to have something like that pre-installed and pre-configured, ready to go, rather than just doing it yourself. You always can, but... For the install and just go out of the box experience, Ubuntu Studio is really the one to go for if you're going to do doing a creative project. Race Session has been upgraded to version 0.12.2. Carla, which is a uh, suite of plugins, has been upgraded to version 2.4.2. Jack Mix are upgraded to 17. And the LSP plugins, another suite of plugins, have been upgraded to 1.1.31. Under Graphic Design, Critter has been upgraded to version 5.0.2. Darktable upgraded to version 3.8.1, Inkscape to 1.1.2, and Digicam to 7.5.0. And under video, OBS Studio, the thing I'm currently recording with right now, is upgraded to 27.2.3, and that is the current version I'm actually recording with. And Cajun Live, the video editor I will be editing the video of this on, has been upgraded to 21.12.3. So quite a lot of upgrades going on in there, as well as bigger things such as a more recent update to KDE Plasma, for example, and all of the other KDE software that comes included in a typical Kubuntu installation will be on here as well. As well as that, a much more up-to-date version of the uh, Linux low latency kernel. And some other things of note is that it's now featuring a dark theme by default. Thank goodness for that. I'm, I'm a big fan of dark themes, not just because I like the look of them, but because it's just, it's just far easier on the eyes. It's not, you don't get blinded by your own computer screen. Support for REFIND. And just one more thing of note here is that if you want to have even more updated software on your system, especially if you want to keep the very stable base of the LTS, the long-term support version, but you'd like to have some of the uh, some of the features of the later versions, there is also the Backports PPA. If you just add that PPA to your repository, then you'll just be able to get those updates as and when they come through. Now, just before we jump into all the packages that are installed in this version, we're going to have a quick look at the Ubuntu Studio installer. And this is a handy little program which you can run if you are using a version of Ubuntu which isn't Ubuntu Studio, but you would like to convert it into being Ubuntu Studio. Now, say for argument's sake you don't really want to use Plasma, this doesn't matter, because I'm using Ubuntu Studio as a converted version of Zubuntu, so it's using the XFC desktop environment. So uh, what I did is I installed Zubuntu, then I installed the Ubuntu Studio installer, and uh, there were more things listed on here, and I just clicked all of them and then just installed. And that's what I've got on my main machine. 
and so that can convert any version of Ubuntu you already have into being Ubuntu Studio. And every time you upgrade, it also upgrades all those packages. This not only installs all the programs, but it also does then go on to pre-configure all of them to run as you'd expect them to in a full version of Ubuntu Studio. As well as that, it also changes over which version of the kernel you use to the low latency one as well, which is super, super handy. So without further ado, let's go through the desktop itself. And first things first, uh, I like the new desktop uh, background. It's not the most flashy thing in the world, but it's, it's quite nice. It looks almost like a bit of stone that's been carved. But something I want to point out in particular is this top bar up here. So normally, all you'd have apart from like the time and the volume and everything over there, all you'd have on the left side would be the application launcher button, uh, which by the way, they have turned square as instead of being circle as because Ubuntu, the mainline Ubuntu, changed its logo recently, Ubuntu Studio not wanting to be held back as they of course are the artists Ubuntu. They didn't want to be behind the curves. They also updated their logo to suit. So that's why it's got that square look now rather than the circle look. But normally it would just be that and then Firefox. However, in a move which I think is a really, really good idea, they have now put, and you can always change this if you like, but they have put a load of the main and most useful pieces of software that you might want to just install and then immediately run right on the top panel here. So we have Firefox, really good web browser obviously, you're probably already aware of that. We have the studio controls, which is that thing I mentioned before, which is multimedia controls. So basically a tool where you can do some finite adjustments to your audio. Our door, which is a free and open source digital audio workstation. That's what musicians use to record and mix and master audio. If you've never used it before, it's quite similar to Pro Tools, actually. OBS, the Open Broadcasting Studio. It is screen recording and live streaming software. I use it for its screen recording capabilities. Krita, or Krita if you prefer, there's a little bit of an argument as to how it's pronounced, is a painting program. A lot of people will pick between this and the next one, which is GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Both of these are basically like, think of them as depending on your needs, they are either really complicated paint programs or they are equivalents to Photoshop. Out of the two myself, I personally use GIMP and I use it to do graphic design. Uh, so I will use it as a replacement for something like Photoshop. KDN Live, the KDE non-linear video editor. It is the video editor I personally use to make all my videos. Digicam, which is photo management software. This was really raved about in the last couple of releases, but it's not something I personally use. I don't tend to do much photography, hence why I also don't tend to use a whole lot of Darktable here, which is just like photo editing software. I don't use it myself. Like I said, I can't do absolutely everything. So if you know a bit more about something I gloss over than I do, please feel free to write it down in the comment section below a bit more of a like in-depth description of what it is for anyone who's coming to this video, you know, wanting to know about something like say graphics, for example, and I really brush over it. And something which I don't think a lot of people like to include, but I think is really useful, is an easy access to the system settings. Super, super useful. Right, let's go into the, uh, into the menu then. And we're gonna go through all the categories as we tend to do. Ubuntu Studio is also known for adding in a couple of categories of its own, audio production, graphic design, and video production. So if we start in audio production, a lot of what we find in here is going to be pieces of software like drivers for particular sort of sound cards and mixers, but as well as that, it'll be plugins and virtual instruments or just other utilities. But just a couple I'm going to point out, we have Alias, which is an organ emulator program. We have Ardor, which is that digital audio workstation. Now, some people choose to install a different DAW into this system. If you are unaware of which ones you can go for in Linux, a couple of other ones you can go for, apart from Ardor, is Reaper, Bitwig Studio, Qtractor, which we'll be seeing a little bit later in this, or Zrhythm, or Zrhythm, however it's pronounced. Those are all also options that are available to go into the system. We have things like Autotuners, we have Audacity, which is, it's audio recording and manipulating software. However, it's good for doing small bits here or there, or like podcasting, or just, you know, something where you have a single input of audio that's just going to be on its own that you want to sort of cut down and edit. But for anything where there's going to be multi-tracks, you want a proper DAW. Carla is a set of plugins. DG Edit, or a drum gizmo rather, is a drum kit virtual instrument. We have tools for things like Firewire cards. We have a virtual guitar ramp and guitar effects software. Some more drum machines and keyboard emulators. 
The Kid 3 audio tagger, basically that just allows you to easily change the tags on audio files. That means, you know, like artist, year, genre, things like that. Sometimes you'll use a piece of software, I know iTunes is quite guilty of this, where you'll change it on there and you'll save it and it runs fine on there. But the moment you move the file to a different piece of software, the tags don't seem to stick. If you ever find that is, is the case, something like Kid 3 audio will help with that a lot. LMMS, which was conspicuous by its absence in the last version of Ubuntu Studio, but seems to have uh, made a return. This is kind of like a DAW. I'm still not sure if it actually accepts actual like audio feeds, but it's quite good for sequencing, so just purely digital music. MuseScore, and this is a quite up-to-date version of MuseScore, which is a brilliant piece of freedom source software for uh, music notation. I find that it is very, very comparable to things like Sibelius and I've been kind of using it a bit more recently than Sibelius. It also can open guitar profiles. Volume control setting for Pulse Audio, which is still currently, as far as I'm aware, the main audio server used for just general computing on Ubuntu Studio. So if you're like going on the internet and looking up a video, for example, the audio you'll hear from that will be from Pulse Audio. There are things as well like Jack, and I do believe they are still either planning to implement or implementing parts of Pipewire, but as far as I'm aware, it is not the default yet. So it's still Pulse Audio we're using at the moment. A whole load of software for managing things like uh, MIDI as well as Jack. Q-Tractor, which uh, I mentioned before, uh, puts itself down as a multi-track sequencer, but really it's another DAW. We have some more guitar processing software here. And of course, an audio suite wouldn't be complete without a load of synthesizers. Under graphic design, we have the aforementioned Darktable, Digicam and GIMP. We also have some other really useful software such as Inkscape, which is uh, vector graphics editing. Uh, vector graphics are basically graphics which can be made larger and made smaller without reducing the image quality. Because you know if you ever take a picture, like a JPEG, and you zoom in, it becomes all a pixelated mess. The idea of vector graphics is as you increase the size of that, the quality remains the same. It's very, very useful for things like logos. K Color Chooser, really, really useful piece of software. You just basically, wherever the cursor is pointing on the screen, it'll tell you the exact color codes. It. So you can use this in conjunction with things like GIMP if you need to find a particular color. And the last thing I want to bring out from the graphic design part is Ocular. Quite simply, the best PDF software you could ever use. Way better than the software Adobe hands out. And under video editing, the only things worth pointing out other than Cajun Live and OBS, which we've already spoken about, is Blender. And uh, Blender is a 3D modeler, so you can either use it to create like you know 3D images. I don't believe it's quite capable of things like CAD design. It's more for things like animation, uh, because it is also a video editor. If, say, you imagine yourself being the next DreamWorks or the next Pixar, you can have a crack at doing that in something like Blender. And under internet, we have Firefox, which is the best browser. Right, editing Adam here. Something I quickly need to bring up is the fact that there's been a lot of controversy going around the fact that Firefox has now been changed to being a snap package rather than a dev package. And this is indeed the case. When I first booted it on my own system, the very, very first time, it was upsettingly slow. And it was a bit of a dampener because I've used things like Brave before through Snap and it takes ages to boot. However, uh, every subsequent boot including after I've shut the computer off and then on again, which normally resets snap and then you have to like, you know, reload the cache. It's loaded at a pretty good speed again. It's been, it's been fine. So I've actually kind of forgotten it was a snap package. So yeah, for me, it's been fine. It's just that our first initial boot seems to be shockingly slow, but after that point, it seems to catch up just fine. Back to the video. Thunderbird Mail, which is a good mail client. We have an IRC client and then we have KG Connect, I don't personally use KG Connect, but basically it's meant to give you a similar experience to what the Apple ecosystem is supposed to be, that whole marketing thing Apple do, where basically things like clipboards can be shared between your phone and your computer and you can access certain files easily just through this app. Two things of note in media playback is VLC Media Player, very, very useful and flexible media player. It's not just for video, it's also for audio. Basically, even if it's a really odd or esoteric format, this should be able to run it. And you can also use it to convert things to, say, different formats. I think you can even adjust bit rates on it as well. You can also strip out the audio from a video and just have the audio left. You can also, quite easily, without pitch shifting, you can speed up and slow down audio. Very, very useful. We also have Eliza, which is a music player. I've really gone along with Eliza too much. I don't tend to use it. I'm actually sort of jumping between music players at the moment. I might even do a video on it, but this one, my biggest gripe with it was it took a long time to import my music library and seemed to never quite do it properly. 
but it's still good to have it featured in here. Under Office, we have the LibreOffice Suite, although an incomplete LibreOffice Suite. This has been a sort of running theme in quite a few iterations of Ubuntu Studio, and I know it's quite a large ISO that they have to fill and they have to strip things out, but it would be nice to have a spreadsheet editor out of the box. LibreOffice is a great alternative to Microsoft Office. Personally, I've basically converted a lot of my stuff over to it, and even if I'm using other systems like Windows or Mac OS, I can't really see myself bothering going back to Microsoft Office at this point. I think I'll just use LibreOffice instead. Something of note under settings as well is that we have the Wacom Tablet Finder. So if you're using like a Wacom tablet, which is used for things like drawing and graphic design or for digital painting, or digital drawing, I suppose it might be referred to as, this would help you to configure it to your system. Once again, this is one of those utilities that's installed rather than just a main program. So if say you're using Critter and you want to draw, you want to get your tablet working basically. So this will help you get that sorted out. Then under system and utilities, it's mostly standard stuff apart from color profile viewer, which I believe is quite useful if you are editing things like photos. We then have a tab for Open Studio information. This is mostly just uh, links to different websites, but quite useful stuff if you're, especially if you're new to Ubuntu in general, as well as Ubuntu Studio, for example, there's a link to Ask Ubuntu here. Very, very useful website for just finding out if other people are having trouble you're having and to see if there are solutions. And if not, you can always ask yourself and get a solution from there. I've done that quite a few times. It's always a quite helpful place and people on there are normally quite happy to help. And so there we have it. Now, if you are using the previous version, I think it's it's a no-brainer to upgrade. Everything is, well, it's, it's, it's simply the same distribution you love, but better and with more up-to-date software. So why not just go for it? If you've never really used it before and you're a bit apprehensive, something you can try is to do it on a virtual machine. In fact, this system you're seeing here is on a virtual machine. I'm using VirtualBox for that as my main system that I have this on is so customized that it doesn't really look like the out of the box experience and I've removed a lot of software I don't use. Whereas this is a very default experience you're looking at here. So you can always install it and give it a go. Bear in mind, a virtual machine won't run exactly as smoothly as it would on bare metal on the actual computer itself. Just bear that in mind, but it's something you can, you can try if you're curious. It was Ubuntu Studio itself that actually made it so that I switched from doing Windows about 75% of the time and Linux about 25% of the time, it's that being flipped, so Linux being my primary system. Just despite the reputation Linux had, this actually gave me basically everything I wanted, but with a bit less of a headache than I was having before in Windows. So, if you have any questions about the system, feel free to ask me down below. If I don't know, then you can always find Ubuntu Studio on websites like Facebook and Mastodon. I think they have a Twitter as well. If not as well, there's also always Ask Ubuntu where you can ask a question on there. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.